So it's that time of the year to make the favourite sweet treat of all mushroom fans and that is mushroom marmalade. <laughs> sounds delicious or sounds gross? I mean if you think about the kind of more conventional kind of mushrooms you might fry up. I mean the thought of those, the marmalade, is kind of quite disgusting. But I'm talking about working with these ones here and uh, there's another one just up there and these are birch polypore fungi and they're just bursting out of the, the, the kind of dead trunks here of uh, what a dead trunk of a bit of birch and at the stage I call it the marshmallow stage you'll see why when we have a kind of close-up and um, I have to say these are bitter but far nicer than marshmallows and uh, I was gonna say gosh it's just it wouldn't it be nice if they tasted like marshmallows but I just remembered how disgusting marshmallows are in my opinion now our ancient ancestors in their kind of wisdom used this mushroom both to treat external kind of wounds in a number of ways actually using it for the kind of for kind of cleaning and the kind of antibacterial qualities of the mushroom but also kind of a, as a sponge it can be used as a, a sponge to kind of uh, stem the flow of blood and uh, you know I imagine them who knows in my, my absurd imagination them sit, sitting around with uh, these on the end, end of sticks over a fire inventing what would have been the first kind of marshmallows who knows but I'm gonna make a pretty funky fungal recipe and that is the marmalade and it's really a bit of fun it does taste good but it's also just to demonstrate how when you're working with fungi it doesn't always have to be savoury and you can actually be really quite playful and have a have some fun with with the recipe so let's just have a a, a closer look at these and there's a another trunk just over there I'll show you what they look like when they when they've got when they've expanded, got a bit larger. There's some remnants from last year, but still in good condition. And then we go back to the kitchen and, and, and start the marmalade. So there they are, firm, but soft. And they just kind of break away really easily and they're kind of tender. There's another one. Now, these are incredibly common and I'm gonna pick these ones here. There's only three here. But I expect more will come on this trunk and like the main part of the mushroom the fungus is just growing out is well it's the mycelium through the whole tree it's just the fruiting bodies when we come to prepare it I will remove this kind of darker bit which is kind of bits of bark and, and, and stuff oh, yeah, look at that it's about the size of a golf ball Let's just go and have a look at, uh, oh, it's rolled under there. See if I can remember where I saw those other ones. I think it's over here. Uh, look. Save me editing, you see. I can't remember where they where they were. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Aha. There we are. So, so really old, old ones, and 
Actually, I wonder, these, look, these actually look like they're from this year, but even though this is quite a small size for this one, it's still at the stage where it'd be no good for marmalade because it's just too, too tough already. I mean, that just demonstrates the, the kind of range of size at maturity. It could be this big or it could be 10 times bigger than that, to be honest. But we only want them when they are kind of round like golf balls, not when they're kind of more, um, I don't know, what do you call that? Flying saucer shaped or bracket shaped. So just on my way out the woods looking for some more marshmallow stage birch polypores and came across this gorgeous example of another fungus that grows on birch. And this is the same genus, uh, Formito, Formitopsis pinacola. I think its common name is red banded polypore, but look at the droplets oozing out. It's really lovely. And then found one of these things. I don't know, it's like Belita sedulis or something. Huh, useless. So here we are back in the kitchen and you'll see that although a lot of them I gathered were in this classic kind of marshmallow stage as I call it. They can get as big as your fist, almost there, look, it's pretty much as big as my fist. And not only that, but they can even start to kind of open out into that bracket shape. But the key thing is, even if it's at this stage, that it's kind of tender. Like if it, if, it, if it was older, you'd be like wrestling with it, trying to break it. Wouldn't happen like that. So, mushroom marmalade. Where do you get such recipes? You know, it's a bizarre recipe. Well, so in a very, very special recipe book. Look at this one. Look. So it's in here. And the reason this is very special is because it's made out of the same mushrooms made out of this mushroom. Well, here we are. This is one of the ingredients we need. Sea buckthorn, that's essential for making the, the kind of orange peel substitute, which the mushrooms are gonna become. There we are, sea buckthorn. And it just so happens that I've been organized with this recipe. By the way, that book, I'd like to say that I co-authored it with a friend, but actually it was made by elves, obviously. Anyway, here we are. Look, we've got some lovely sea buckthorn. I had it frozen. These are from last year, although the season is right now. The best time is September, although the berries can stay on the bush until January, um, late January. I've harvested them before, but now they're at their prime. some syrup out of this, very easy. Blend it up. Strain it through a cloth. In there, look. You can see that kind of seeds floating around. There's going to be some great seeds that I can use as well after this. Look at that gorgeous juice. Wow. Wow. Oh! <laughs> I almost squirted it onto the book. Not a good idea. 
book doesn't like to be wet, so the elves tell me. I'm going to put that in a pan with, that's about, I would say, that's about a pint of pure juice to that. I'm going to add sugar. Mm, how much? I know, about a cupful. Some. Some is my favourite measurement. It's a really good measurement. And then I'm just going to pour that up. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare the mushrooms, take out the kind of woody bits and chop them into fine... Actually, this is going to be a coarse mushroom marmalade. So I'm going to cut them not really finely, but into quite chunky strips. So I'll show you how to do that. Actually, there's one thing. Just before I chop the mushrooms, because it's going to take a little while, we've got one orange thing in the pan, which is a sea buckthorn juice, but it's marmalade. So have got orange juice and I'm just going to boil this down to double concentrate it. I've never made marmalade like this. I haven't actually made this particular recipe for 10 years. And uh, the last time I did it with fresh oranges. But I'm going to do it a different way this time, see what happens. I always like to change things around. So, well, look at the different oranges now. The first thing we're going to do for cutting them, and it's really for aesthetic reasons really, is to peel them. So peel the brown bit off and also the immature tube layer on the bottom. If it will come away, like on the really small ones, it might not come away. bitter mushroom so I've got to boil it in some water. Actually we're gonna boil it in three changes of water. So I boiled three times, strained for the last time, still slightly bitter, but then so is orange peel. So that's okay. So I'm going to put that in the sea buckthorn syrup. And to be honest, I added the same quantities of berries as you saw me doing the first time, because I realised with this quantity of mushroom I'd need some more syrup. So I'm going to boil that up in there for a few minutes and then just let it sit in the syrup overnight and then I'm going to reduce it down let it sit overnight again and then reduce it down one final time so basically it's going to take three days and then we'll be ready for the final stage of the substitute orange peel um, preparation the mushroom orange peel preparation actually the horrible truth right it's not as simple as just putting it on the dehydrator sheet I wish it's a case of Pretending you're really happy because it's such a meditative experience. It's just putting every one so it doesn't touch the other one, so they don't stick together. It's really nice, very calming. There they are. So I shall carry on for the next hour and with the other train as well. There they are. See, they've shrunk a little bit, but they are now really just like orange peel, much firmer.
So, final stage, bottles ready, orange peel substitute ready, orange juice boiled down, a bit of pectin added, some sugar, some of these in there, my favourite measurement, some more, stir it in. Mushroom marmalade done. Finished marmalade.